We are actually looking at the future. Kind of came out of nowhere, and he is now top 10 in the world. Tons of quality muscle, really good shape, and his conditioning is always improving. I think he's going to be one of the next big things in bodybuilding. I think he's got a tremendous amount of potential. I thought your physique was absolutely incredible. This guy at six feet, he's the next coming of Ronnie Coleman. Great genetics, great structure. The cleanest lines of the show, the freshest looking muscle. This is what we're looking at as far as the future of bodybuilding. I think this is going in the right direction. Mr. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. <laughs> Once I hit the Olympia stage, things just kind of like blew up in a sense because it's like overnight, no one knows who you are. You just come on the biggest stage in bodybuilding and you actually look like you belong there. for the day. It's a lot of blow and go. Trying to do this sport and work at the same time. Like 75 grams of this. You just do it after fasted cardio. So just kind of get it ready. Just once I get back. Just gotta get dressed and hurry up and get to work. Back to the lower food plan today. But that's how it goes. It's a lot of up and down. But it is what it is. Uh, like maybe five, eight more weeks of it, nine, two shows back to back. This is a routine. Get, get. Late nights, early mornings. No Camaro today. It's cool, but you know, when you work, you gotta watch how you spend your money. So you can't go crazy trying to fill this thing up with gas every day. So you gotta have your everyday vehicle. You know, you have to be able to get up early um, if you wanna do this sport because they'll get to the times where you have to eat those meals, which is obviously a big component and talk about all the time is is eating and you have to get up and get started because if you if you like me you have to work you have to plan your day your workout has to be around a certain time and sometimes you have to work out early in the day even though you might like might not like it and if you have to get meals in before you have to get up earlier and start eating there's times i eat at you know five o'clock in the morning i don't want to but i have to have two meals in before i train now, if I want to have a good workout, I could train you know, with lower food, but when it's the plan, it's the plan, and you have to stick to the plan. best friends if you're doing your job you learn to have a long-lasting relationship with the Stairmaster how long are you gonna be doing this I've been through 45 minutes this morning nothing crazy uh, I'm actually only assigned to do 30 so I might just do that and get out of here just so I'm not off plan
Yeah, with where we are. Um, we did two hours last prep, but we started this prep at a lower body fat percentage. So, you had to be careful when starting to not go crazy, because you don't want to bite into the muscle. And we're going for a more full, harder package this time around hit the Arnold. So, other guys are doing a lot, probably because they have to, they're trying to get tighter, but we started off pretty tight. So it was easy to bring the amount down. We just had to be careful to not do too much cardio while you're trying to keep as much size as possible. That wraps that up. Pretty quick, pretty mindless. Now I'm up, of course. A little slow moving earlier, but once the blood gets going, it's time to get to work. Think about how much torture that is for someone trying to lose weight. What a burger. In the parking lot with the gym. Oh, you just did 30 minutes of cardio? Come on over and have some taquitos. I was always muscular as a kid. And it's funny, I think I was two years old maybe, and there's a picture in there. It was Christmas time. And I always loved cars. And I was doing the front double bicep pose. And then I noticed it in other pictures as I was growing up. So I was, I, I, I idolized like action figures when I was growing up. So we would see the wrestlers, the little He-Man toys or whatever. So that's what we wanted to look like. It's funny because now that I go back and look at pictures when I was a teenager, it's just a much smaller version of what I am now. So I always had that ability to be muscular and you know now it's just aimed at actually growing that muscle. Now it's time to go to work. And I'm all since I don't want to do the back and forth, once I'm out of the house, I'm pretty much out of the house for the day. So I have to take all my food with me. So what I'm doing right now is just kind of weighing out what I'm gonna have for meal two, meal three's in the bag, uh, and then of course I'll have meal four and five. So this is just your basic 10 ounces of chicken and one cup of rice. So this is the part you guys might not have seen. Um, I just put in, the, get the chicken, wash it, clean it, put it in the oven 20 minutes and that's that. Put it in to go container. And that's the Mrs. Dash seasoning that's on there because you don't, like I said, you do lower sodium when I'm getting closer to a show. And so there's two chicken and rice meals. So this will be meal three, meal four. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have the fish uh, twice. And that'll wrap it up. It's nothing special today. Today is a very boring meal plan. And here, this is a 75 gram whey protein shake. So I say this with me, I'll have this uh, after my workout. So this is immediately after the workout and then about 45 minutes or so after, I'll have the solid meal. And that's so, that food, the, the protein shake absorbs quick. So you want fast absorption after post-workout because that, that muscle is going, it's eating. Uh, so it's kind of gotta, gotta get those nutrients, nutrients in there. And this is a little trick too, I keep with me in case I get hungry. I'll keep a can of tuna and I'll just eat it plain, it's just by itself. Like me all day, if you have to work and you're moving around, um, you keep something extra that you can put in your body if you're just that hungry so you're not tempted to cheat on your diet. That'll get me through about eight hours, which is about a typical work day. Every prep is a little bit different because what happens, uh, when you break a body down, to a certain body fat percentage and however long it took you to do that, whether it was 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, you're actually changing the way your body stores fat or it burns energy because as you put on more muscle, your metabolic rate is gonna change. So every prep, you're almost kinda, depending on the changes you make and how drastic, you could be working with a completely different body. We prep and it's 12 weeks and then we get a final physique and then we're like, man, that was good, but uh, we, we, this wasn't quite like this. We could have been uh, more full. You know, we weren't conditioned enough, or man, we could be harder and bigger. 
and and then you have to change it according to the lineup or the judges feedback because they'll tell you hey can you do this and so then you're back to the drawing board like man okay i know on this prep i look like this so how can i take that and mix it with this prep where i look like this so then you get a conditioned physique a more full and hard physique and then you have to put those together and then like i said that's still not an exact recipe because it could be a different physique that you're working with so it's an ever-changing evolutionary process we're trying to learn the body with foods. It's never gonna stay the same because your body's gonna change. It's not an immediate financial gain when you turn pro. If anything, you're actually gonna start losing even more money because you're at the next level and things like food become even more important. So where you could get by missing a meal here, missing a meal there, maybe not buy your sports supplements, whatever you need for your prep, all that stuff becomes necessity at the pro level because now everyone is there at a high level. So you gotta keep your income coming in because even then you don't make money automatically, you still have to win a show and you're going up against people who have experience. So you're spending, just like if you're an amateur, all this money on a prep, you're putting in all the time, all the effort for a result that you just might not get. Yeah, I know, I know. Let them cool off, I'm gonna go 10 tens. Yeah, you want an arm day, so. I'll let you have it, yeah, every, every little bit of it. A lot of people think when you're a personal trainer, like you make your own schedule. In a sense you do, but then at the same time, you're providing a service for people who have their schedule. So if you wanna make money, you kinda have to work with them on their schedule as well. So you don't get that freedom to kinda come and go as you please. For me, it's very challenging because my meal time is never exact. Uh, it, it's sporadic sometimes because like I said, I have to adjust my schedule based on my clients. So with that going on, sometimes my training time may switch an hour here and there. And you know, you just have to roll with the punches. So we got a guy here in Houston, we call him the Ice Pick. So. His, his name's, we call him the Ice Pick because he uses his elbows and his elbows are, are sharp. I mean, they, this guy has perfected this technique where he does, you know, fascia release and deep muscle therapy with his elbow. It'll make everything softer so it expands better. And especially whenever you're doing posing, you want these muscles to be as relaxed as you can so that you can get them as full as you can. All my bodybuilders need to have their tissue very soft and pliable, not hard and rigid. So it's tight to this whole area, which doesn't allow this nice big stingray looking flare to happen. So it was kind of like, see where now it flares out like this, it was kind of like like that. It pull back in. It wouldn't, it wouldn't release and open up fully. But no, matter, no matter how much. Because he can twist and turn all he wants to. Yeah, and still see, the flesh wouldn't go there. So a lat spread is done because you 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 roll this around the front. So you kind of roll your shoulder. And pull your shoulder blade But it blade comes from out. the shoulder blade. From so here. If, you, if, you have, if you're stuck here because it's bound up in the middle, it takes away. But once you can fully open up, then it pops out. Way more dimension. And that's what we're trying to create with moving fascia around. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and now throw it out. And there you go. Burger time. People's Choice Best Burger. Burgers, dogs, just right. Can I have a cheeseburger with, uh, I was gonna have just mustard on it, mustard, meat, and cheese. 
and the little cheeseburger the same way. And let's have a large Cajun fry. And a regular Diet Coke. I wake up every morning, send the progress pictures, and based on how we're looking, and also what I'm training, then that's when they'll decide like if he's gonna give me a treat. So it's actually kind of funny because you know there's a joke that goes around bodybuilders are like you gotta eat like a dog, so it's the same thing every day. And when we get a cheat meal, it's like a treat. Just like you give a dog a treat for doing their job right, then it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> The normal cheeseburger, I believe it's 900 calories, or 980, and then I have the little cheeseburger, so it's just a smaller version. It's 620, so that alone is 1,500 calories. Uh, on a normal day, I probably, I won't even get actually 2,300 calories. So as you can see in one meal with just the burgers, that's not including the fries. The fries are another 1,300 calories, so I'm already at nearly 3,000 calories with just one meal. So as you can see, those numbers really start to add up uh, once I stack in the extra cups of rice. Uh, I have a 12 ounce potato with a 12 ounce steak also later this evening. So it's a very, very heavy day. That's why I say it's literally probably about three times the normal caloric intake for the day. And it's just a shock to muscle. A coach can only do so much. You have to learn your body. If you do that, you'll be good. If you don't, you run a risk of not knowing what's going on, you know? Oh, let's see, is that me? Easy, brother. Ah, okay. Let's see what's in the goodie bag. Oh, wow. So you guys want to see? Look, look at all those fries. Jeez. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Woo. Life's good right now. The Five Guys experience was uh, heavenly. <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it had been so long since I had a burger and fries. So yeah, I'm a real by the book guy. If I get a plan, I stick to it. I don't deviate from it. Um, if I may have, like I said earlier, a rice cake or something if I'm just starving, but the plan is a plan and I stick to it. So that was just to shock the body and give it something to actually burn before we start actually biting into the muscle. Cause that will happen. If you're staying on the plan that's low in calories, you'll start to eat up that muscle doing cardio and harder training. So it was good, it was necessary, very, very tasty. And um, I don't know when it'll happen again, but uh, maybe in nine weeks, whenever these shows are over. But it was good, It was I definitely needed it. What's next for Patrick Moore? Uh, obviously, we had an Arnold Classic. That's that's next. We have the Arnold Classic Ohio, and then a couple weeks later, 13 days later, we have the Arnold Classic Australia. So those are the next two big shows that are on the books. Other than that, obviously, we have our sights on Olympia, having a better showing. But for right now, I don't think too far in the future, everything's day by day. And the only purpose in the sport, anyway, is to grow. You know, put on some good quality muscle mass, stay in my own lane. I don't really chase what some of the other guys are doing. I have to just stick to my program, make the most out of it. If I'm locked in on something, all my efforts every single day are for that goal. And that's not just in the gym, that's developing a mentality, that's connecting with the fans, that's you know just doing a business of bodybuilding. And that's what it has to be because if I want that position and I want to inspire people, then that means I have to actually live that lifestyle and create balance and show people that hey, you can do this and live a, a sane life at the same time. You're just gonna have to work hard. So for me, that's it. That's all that's on my radar is that Olympia title. Mm -hmm.